السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له وتفضله على امتنان ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله داعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخواني أما بعد إخواني في الله Tonight, إخواني في الله in our topic regarding the day of judgment we shall look at the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What status does the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam occupy in this world and what status does he occupy on the day of judgment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا O Prophet, from the night, pray a few Voluntary prayers. Pray the tahajjud prayer at night. A voluntary prayer for you, O Prophet. Perhaps on the day of judgment, we shall raise you to a high station. The Prophet والسلام, occupies a very high station in this world and in the hereafter. Let us talk, number one, with regards to the station the Prophet والسلام, holds in this world. Why is the Prophet والسلام, very dear to us? Why do we love him? And how much love do we profess for him as Muslims? This man, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to remove us from the darkness into the light. He removed us from the narrowness of worshipping many gods to the whiteness of worshipping one creator. He removed us from the narrowness of this world to the whiteness of this world and the year after. As Rabi'i ibn Amir said to Rustum when he went to conquer Pajia. If it was not for this man, we will not be Muslims on this day. If it was not for this man, we will not be amongst the people of Jannah. This is all the love that the Prophet والسلام, and the mercy that he has for his ummah. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا إِلَّا مَاذَا إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you, O Prophet, except that you are a mercy to all the worlds. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, is a mercy upon us in this world. And is a mercy upon us on the day of judgment. Let us know the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him to the highest station on the day of judgment and the highest position in Jannah. What is this maqam Mahmud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his messenger alayhi salatu salam in this world, in the hereafter, and in paradise? This is our topic for tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit all of us in it. Ali ibn Abi Talib, anhu, Amir al muminin he was asked by some of the tabi'een, كَيْفَ كَانَ حُبُّكُمْ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Um, tell us, what was your love? How did you used to regard the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? He says, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Wallahi, kana habbu ilayna min amwalina wa awladina wa abaina wa ummahatina wa min almai albaridi ala dhama Wallahi, he was more beloved to us than our property, our children, our mothers and our fathers and cold water in this hot sun of the desert. We love our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He is more dear to us than even having a drink of cold water in the heat of the desert. Such was the love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, one of the enemies of Islam at the time, he later on became a Muslim. One day he captures Zayd ibn Dathina. And he captures another sahabi called Khubayb al-Ansari. He's they are brought to Makkah in the year 4 of the Hijri calendar. And they are told, we fought Muhammad and his companions in Uhud. We killed 70 of them, but we still have revenge against them. And you too are going to pay for the sins of Muhammad and his companions, alayhi salatu wasalam. So they paraded Zayd ibn Dathina and Khubayb al-Ansari to be executed. Khubayb and Zayd, they ask, let us play, pray two rak'ah. They prayed two rak'ah quickly, they didn't take their much time. Then Abu Sufyan asked them, O Zayd, I ask you by Allah, O Zayd, will you not love 
for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be in your position right now and you are with your family resting. He says, Wallahi, I would not love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be in the place that he is in, to be pricked by a thorn, وَأَنَا جَالِسٌ فِي أَهْلِي and I am seated with my family. The same thing Khubayb ibn Adi al-Ansari he said, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, listen to what he says, an enemy of Islam, he says, Wallahi, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا يُحِبُّ أَحَدًا كَحُبِّ أَسْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُحَمَّدًا صلى الله عليه وسلم He says, Wallahi, I've never seen anyone who loves anyone like the companions of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم They love Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Such was the love that the Muslims have for this man who brought them from the darkness and brought them into light who made them amongst the people of Jannah عليه الصلاة والسلام بأبي وأمي We as Muslims we say, may our fathers and our mothers be sacrificed for you, O Prophet of Islam. Another enemy of Islam at that time also, he was not a Muslim yet, Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. This is only the enemies we are talking about. He goes to Hudaybiyah, he's the ambassador of Quraysh, and he negotiates on behalf of Quraysh, and he signs an agreement that looks to benefit the Quraysh. It looks to benefit the Quraysh, so much so that Umar gets angry. He goes back to his people, Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi, and he says this famous word, he says, Ya qawm, laqad wafattu ala al-muluk, wafattu ala qaysar wa kisra wa najashi. O people, wallahi I have visited the kings of this world. Every king you can mention in this world I have visited. Caesar, the king of the Romans in Constantinople, in Istanbul, I have visited. Kisra in Iran, the lead king, the emperor of the Persians, I have visited. Najashi, the king of the Ethiopians, the Abyssinians, I have visited. I have visited these three superpowers, the Ethiopians, the Romans, and the, Bizer, and the Persians. Wallahi. He says, By Allah, ma ra'aytu, ma ra'aytu I have never seen a king ever. Yu'addhimuhu ashabuhu ma yu'addhimu ashabu Muhammad Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you hear the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't be stingy. You salli wa sallam ala, ala nabi alayhi sallallahu sallam. So he says, Wallahi, I've never seen anyone of the kings who is more beloved by his followers, like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is beloved to his companions. He says, مَا تَنَخَّمَ نُخَامَةً إِلَّا وَقَعَتْ فِي رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُمْ فَذَلِكَ بِهِ وَجْهَهُ وَجِسْمَهُ He says, he does not spit alayhi salatu salam, except that some of them take that spit and they wipe over their faces and their body. The spit of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and everything that comes from the body of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam is blessed. It's not like other human beings. So do not go take the spit of your sheikhs or of these other people. It's only specific to the Prophet ﷺ. The barakah is with him, not with these other Musa, Isa, and Ali's. Tom, Dick, and Harry's, they say in English. Number two, he says, Wallahi ma tawadda'a wudu'an illa kadu yaqtatilu ala wudu'i. He does not perform wudu except the almost fighting over the remainder of the water that comes out or, or falls from the skin of the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ida amarahum amran ibtadaru amra. When he commands them, they listen to his command. Like for example, one day the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the mosque. Then he says to the companions, Ijlisu, sit down. Abdullah ibn Rawaha, he was in the market. Like Mugoya vegetable. He hears the voice of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam fajalasa fi makani. He sat on his spot and he did not leave that spot until the Prophet alayhi salatu salam was told by his companions that Abdullah ibn Rawaha is seated over there. He's not yet stood up. Give him permission to stand up. Please allow him to stand up. Such were the Muslims. Such were the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam as mentioned by Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. هكذا كان حبهم وإجلالهم للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. الله سبحانه وتعالى يسيز من القرآن وما قدر الله حق قدره. They did not give Allah سبحانه وتعالى the true status that he deserves. Also the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام we as the Muslims have we given him the true status the true position that this Prophet deserves عليه الصلاة والسلام. إخواني في الله in the year two of the Hijri calendar was the great battle of Badr, the 17th of Ramadan, the year 2 of the Hijri calendar. The Muslims versus the Quraysh, the year 2, 17th Ramadan. If the Muslims are defeated in this battle, none of us seated here today will be Muslims. Are you aware of this? The great battle of Badr, 17th Ramadan, the year 2. 
If the Muslims were defeated in this battle, none of us will be Muslims on this day. Alhamdulillah, the Muslims were victorious. In this battle, Allah, many amazing things happened. From amazing things that happened is the story of Sawad ibn Ghazi al-Ansari. Sawad ibn Ghazi, the Prophet والسلام, is arranging the lines on the battlefield on the day of Badr. Every time he finds Sawad, is out of line. He's standing in front or he falls behind. What's wrong with the Sawad? So he pokes him with his stick. Oh, Sawad, stand nicely. This man, he does something strange. He says, Oh, ja'atani ya Rasulullah. You have caused me pain, O oh, Prophet. You have hit my stomach. It's painful. Uridul qisas. I want revenge. The same way you have hurt me, I want to hurt you. The Muslims are like, what's happening? You want to take revenge on the Prophet of Islam, alayhi salatu salam. But this is a religion, yukhani fillah, from the foremost foundations of our deen is justice, al-adl. No one is above the law. Even the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he says, if my daughter Fatima stole, I will cut off her hand. No one is above the law. Not the daughter of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, not his family, no one, even he himself. So he raises up his shat, alayhi salatu salam, and says to Sawad, take your revenge. So the Muslims are looking at Sawad. He's coming from the army. 313 of the companions in the Battle of Badr, as narrated by the scholars, they're looking at Sawad. You're going to harm the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. What's happening here? They're confused. This man comes, he hugs the Prophet والسلام, and kisses him on the stomach. Prophet والسلام, asks him, Yes, Sawad, why are you doing this? What is the reason behind your action? Why are you doing this? He says, Oh, Prophet, you see what is present before us. We are going to die in this battle. Some of us are going to die. Yes, he says, I wanted, if this is the last day on this planet, dear brother, dear sisters in Islam, he says, if this is the last day that I have in this earth, that the last person that I touch is you, O Prophet of Islam, والسلام, Look at the love that these people have for the Prophet, والسلام, Look how they raised this man. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised him so much so that even in the adhan, we mentioned Allah's name and the Prophet's name. And the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him to a station that all the creation, the disbelievers, the believers, the haywan, kulluhum, they shall praise the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Asa yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. Also in this battle of Uhud, of Badr, Khanifillah, two brothers, Mu'adh and Mu'awad ibn Jabal, Mu'adh and Mu'awad, the sons of Afra, 15 year olds, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he says, I look at my right when I'm in the line of Badr, I'm seeing a young boy, 15 years of age. I look to my left, 15 years of age. He says, Wallahi, I wish that I was next to people who are strong who will support me. You know, you want backup, you want your boys to be with you in battle. So 15 years, 15 years, what are they going to do? He says, فَغَمَّزَنِ أَحَدُمَا One of them, he hits me and he says, يَا عَمْ, O oh, uncle, هَلْ تَعْرِفُ أَبَا جَهْلٍ Do you know Abu Jahl? He says, وَمَا حَجَتُكَ إِلَيْهِ يَا ابْنِ أَخِي Yes, I know Abu Jahl. And what do you want with Abu Jahl? He says, أُخْبِرْتُ أَنَّهُ يَسُبُّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I have been informed that he insults this Fir'aun of this Ummah. He insults the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. وَاللَّهِ لَإِنْ رَأَيْتُهُ لَا يُفَارِقُ سَوَادِ سَوَادَهُ حَتَّى يَمُوتَ الْعَجَلَ مِنَّهُ وَاللَّهِ if I am to see him, I will not leave him, I will not leave my sight until one of us passes away. The only reason, Yukhani Fillah, that these two 15-year-olds have come to the battlefield is to defend the honor of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. The honor that has been insulted, the honor of this man that was tortured by this Abu Jahl, the Fir'aun of this Ummah. He says, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, fa'ajabtu, fa'ajabtu min qawli. I was so amazed by this young man. Initially, I was looking down upon him, but now his status raised high because of why he came to the battlefield. He says, فَغَمَزَنِ الْآخَرِ The next one, the young boy, also hit me. He says, يَا أَبَجَا يَا أَمِّي هَلْ تَعْرِفَ أَبَجَا هَلْ Do you know Abu Jahl? And he said the same words. Short one later, إخواني في الله. He says, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, I see Abu Jahl in the battlefield of Badr. And I say to these two boys, أَلَا تَرَيَانْ هَذَا سَاحِبُكُمَا Don't you see? This is your companion. This is the one you're looking for. 
They didn't ask a single question. They went rushed and they hit him, both of them, with their swords. And they went back to the Prophet والسلام, to inform him the good news. Oh, Prophet, the Fir'aun of this Ummah, Abu Jal, is no more. The Prophet والسلام, he asks them, Ayyukuma qatala? Who amongst you killed this Abu Jal? Who amongst you gave raha, gave ease to the Ummah, killing this evil man, Abu Jal? They said, both of us killed him. Show us your swords, the Prophet والسلام, says to them. And he's shown the swords. And he says to them, Kila kuma qatala. Both of you have killed Abu Jal. Look at the love that these two young boys have for the Prophet ﷺ. They were ready to even sacrifice their lives to save the honor of the Prophet ﷺ. Bi abi wa ummi ya Rasulullah. Hakada kana hubbuhum wa ijlaluhum nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how the Muslims, they hold high the Prophet ﷺ. This is the year two of the Hijri Kanda. Just a little bit back, the year one of the Hijri Kanda. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radhala'an. None of us, whatever deeds we do, Hanifillah, we will ever reach Abu Bakr Siddiq. That is a lost cause. Umar tried competing with him and he lost. None of us, Hanifillah, we can reach Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, because something in his heart. The Iman in his heart is greater than all our Iman combined, Hanifillah. One day at the time of Dhuhr, the Prophet والسلام, comes in Mecca. The sun is very hot. He knocks the door of Abu Bakr. Then they ask, who is at the door? He says, Abu Bakr said, he says, the Prophet is at the door. He says, Bi Abi Ummi, may my father and my mother be sacrificed for his sake. Ma ata bihi illa amrun jalal. Wallah has not come except for something very important. So the Prophet والسلام, enters the house and he gives him one of the greatest news in Islamic history. One of the greatest news ever in Islamic history. He says to him, Ya Abu Bakr, Udhina li bil hijra. Oh Abu Bakr, I have been given permission to perform the hijra. He says, she says, our mother Aisha radhalana, she was a child at that time. He says, I never thought that a grown man will cry out of happiness except when I saw for my father. My father broke down in tears. Then he asked the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah, will I be your companion in this journey? He says, naam. Day after the Prophet Abu Bakr started crying. Look how much this man had love for the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. One day the Prophet alayhi salatu salam is giving a khutbah on the member. And he says, a servant of Allah has been given a choice. He's been given a choice to stay in this world and enjoy its pleasures or to choose the hereafter. And this servant has chosen the hereafter. The Muslims understood this is a normal message. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq anhu started crying. He broke down and started weeping. The Sahaba, they say, afterwards we understood. We're wondering why is this old man crying? But afterwards we understood. That servant that the Prophet والسلام, was mentioning in the story was himself. He was given a choice between remaining in this world or living in this world and dying and for Prophet to end. And he chose what is with Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet والسلام, he says, Wallahi, anything I wanted from Abu Bakr, he gave me. All the Muslims owe me. I have, I have favors upon them. But the only man that has a favor upon me is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. If I was to take a Khalil, a very close friend from this Ummah, I will have chosen Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me as his Khalil. The same way he chose Ibrahim as a Khalil. So for, for Abu Bakr, it's brotherhood and companionship. Such was the love, of Allah, that the Muslims, they hold for the Prophet alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَأَيْخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا If your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, your business, your commerce that you fear loss, 
or your dwellings which you reside are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger and the jihad fi sabilih fatarabbasu then await yukhanifillah such is the how we hold the prophet alayhi sallallahu salam he is dear to us even more than cold water on the hottest of days as mentioned by Ali ibn Talib look at this of Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu very amazing man in the year 8 of the Hijri calendar all his family have become Muslims except one person in the family the father of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq Abu Quhafa has not yet become a Muslim so he goes to the house on the 20th of Ramadan the year 8 of the Hijri after the Muslims have cooked Makkah Bilal has gone to give the adhan on the Kaaba he goes to the house and he brings his father Abu Quhafa blind almost blind or completely blind beard completely white he brings this old man to the prophet alayhi salatu salam and says oh prophet my father has come to accept islam prophet alayhi salatu salam says to him oh bakr you should have called us we go meet the old man why did you bring the old man here he says no you are more worthy for us to come to you not for you to come to us he says the father ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah he puts his hand on the Prophet والسلام, and says, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Islam. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq who starts crying. Now the people never understand Abu Bakr. Every time he cries, it's always a case. Why is this old man crying? They ask him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved your entire family including your father from the hellfire. This is a day of happiness, a day of joy. Why are you crying, O oh, Abu Bakr? Says, listen to this love, Yuhani Villah. And wallahi, billahi, none of us can reach this love. None of us, Yuhani Villah, nor the position of Abu Bakr as Siddiq can reach this position. Listen to what he says. Wallahi, none of us can reach this position. He says, Waditu, Annayada. I wish that this hand that was accepting Islam today is not the hand of my father. What are you talking about? I wish that the hand that was accepting Islam today was the hand of the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, Abu Talib. Because that will have made the Prophet والسلام, even more happy. Be honest. You have been given an option. Huh? Your father or the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, one of them has to go to paradise and the other one has to go to hellfire. Choose. For Abu Bakr, it's an easy choice. Oh, Baba, you go to the hellfire. Uncle of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, you go to Jannah. Who amongst us is ready to make that choice? Such is the status of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Such was the love that the Muslims had for the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. Bilal ibn Rabah, the Mu'addin, from Habasha, he was a slave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him from the time he was punished in Mecca as a slave. He was tortured, almost killed in Makkah. He comes back to Makkah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised this man's position that he gives the adhan on the Kaaba. He goes to the Kaaba on top in front of the chieftains of the, the nobles of the Quraysh and he gives the adhan, this black man from Ethiopia. This man, after the Prophet والسلام, died, he could not give the adhan. Then one day the Muslims, they come, they conquer the lands of Asham and he resides there. So one day the Muslims beg him, Oh, Bilal, please give us the adhan. And he starts giving the adhan with the beautiful voice that he had. He had not given adhan since the day Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa died. He says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan. He cannot finish there. He reaches the part that says, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and he breaks completely in tears. And all the Muslims, they cry in tears, remembering this great man that saved them from the darkness and brought them to the light. Ikhanifillah, such is the love that the Muslims have for the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ one day was in the graveyard, and he says, Wallahi, I wish to meet my brothers. He says, the companions, Ya Rasulullah, are we not your brothers? They say to him, he says to them, No, you are my companions. My brothers are the ones who will come after you. So the Prophet والسلام, refers to us as his brothers. He says that a person will love me so much that he is ready from us, not the Sahaba, 
from us that he's ready to sacrifice all his wealth, all his family. Let my dad, my mom, my children, my wives, everyone of my family pass away so that they, he can see me a single once. That is the iman. And that is the love that we hold for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, An-Nabiyu awla bil-mu'minina min anfusihim. That the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is more worthy of the believers than their own souls. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta kuna habba ilayhi min waladi wa walidi wa nasi ajma'in. None of you will get true iman until I'm more beloved to them than their parents than their children and everyone on the face of the earth. Such is the raised position, the raised status of the Prophet So much so, that the name Muhammad is the most popular name in the whole world. You find some people from West Africa or from Pakistan or a number of countries. You can find 10 brothers. All of them, their names are Muhammad. I've even seen some in the mosque from the Somali community. All of them, Muhammad Amin, Muhammad Salah, Muhammad Amir, all of them, they have to have the name Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in the name. Such is the real status of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in this world. What will be his status, Ikhanifillah, on the day of judgment? The day that is horrifying, the day that is equivalent to 50,000 years. On that day, Ikhanifillah, everyone will lose hope. All the prophets will not be there to assist except one man, one man, and that is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How will he assist us on the day of judgment? And what is the raised station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him on the day of judgment? This is our lecture for tomorrow. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.